Hey everyone, welcome to Midweek at the Compass. My name is Jake, I'm our online pastor here, and I'm excited that we are in a sermon series about David, the making of a king, where we get to look at his early life to figure out what are the events that happened that God was forming him through to where David could be considered a man after God's own heart. You know, this last weekend, we looked at a story and a passage out of 1 Samuel 25, and it's about David and this woman named Abigail. And ultimately, uh, Abigail's husband wronged David, uh, but went and apologized. And here's the really fun part of it. David listened. He learned. He was getting ready to make a massive mistake, and he thought better of it because he was able to learn and receive wisdom from different sources or sources maybe that you wouldn't have expected at the time. And that's why I'm excited for what we're going to do here today, because I'm joined by two friends of mine that I'm excited to have you all learn from as well, because they aren't anybody from our church or congregation. They're actually from other churches here in Chicagoland, because guess what? One of the things that I've learned lately and God's been pressing on my heart just through working through and with some of our church planters specifically, is there are a lot of churches that Jesus is excited about. And I'm excited to have a conversation with some of my friends that work for other Chicagoland churches. So on one side of me, I have Stetson Butler. Uh, Stetson works for Chapel Street Church in Geneva. Yeah. And then on the other side, we've got Dennis Beaujour. Am I saying the last name correctly? Beaujour. So oh man, I tried. Uh, <laughs> Dennis is a pastor at Willow Creek Community Church up in, I don't know, I considered that the Great White North, but where specific? South Barrington. Barrington South sure. Barrington. Uh, but with that, I just want to kind of open it up, man. Stetson, tell us a little bit about Chapel Street Church. Yeah, Chapel Street Church. We are located in Geneva and we've been there for a really long time. We actually over 100, 125 years. Whoa. A long, it's been a long time at this church. You haven't been there for all of it, right? Um, no, no, I haven't. I've been there. I moved here from originally Arizona. Then I was living in LA for like 10 years. Moved here to be by my wife's family and got a job at Chapel Street. We're here for seven years now. So Awesome. Yeah. And yeah. just for a little bit of context, let people learn about mm. you. Uh, but more specifically, you've got some things on your wrists. Maybe <laughs> yes. we can just get that those elephant of out of the bag here. Those of you joining us on YouTube, you can see I did not rollerblade here. These aren't rollerblade. Don't they look like rollerblade? They do. do you guys remember these when we were kids? Totally. Oh, yeah. Um, no, these are casts, removable casts. I broke both my wrists on a skiing accident uh, on Valentine's Day. So I went to go skiing with my parents as a birthday present from them to me and went and skied in Arizona and I did something dumb and I, I, I don't even remember what it was because I knocked myself unconscious in the process. So. Oh man, that's got to be the worst part of the yeah. story. I mean, the pain is not great to begin yeah. with, but to be able to not have an epic story to tell I afterwards, know, right? it's really just, yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> I woke I up with remember. two broken wrists. Yeah, it's going to be a fun two truths and a lie someday. <laughs> that, um, that I knocked myself unconscious and don't even remember from what my skiing accident was. But totally fair. Anyway, so All that's right. why the wrist braces are on. All so. right. And Dennis, what about you? Tell us a little bit about Willow Creek here. <laughs> yeah, Willow Creek uh, has been around for about 45 years, and uh, we have seven locations uh, across the Chicagoland area. And um, we've been through a uh, leadership transition over the last four or five years that many people have heard about. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so still navigating that as our new senior pastor, Dave Dummett, uh, has been around for about uh, 18 months now. It's been 18 mm -hmm. months already. Wow. Yeah, maybe even two years. It's crazy. That's okay. Yeah. I'm assuming you're, you know, that's going as well as you can be in expected with, you know, turmoil that's been in the past of Willow, but totally excited about moving forward. Totally excited about what's got, what God's doing at Willow Creek. All so. right. Well then let's ask that as the next question. What is God doing at Willow Creek? Right? I think stories are one of the best things that we have in our arsenal to share. And I just mm -hmm. love to have people know that um, God is doing things not just at the Compass Church, but at your guys' churches as well. So um, do you have a story or two that come to mind of just some things that have been happening, you know, over the last handful of months that would be worthwhile? Yeah, yeah, totally. I think God has been uh, really good to us over the last uh, couple of months. Uh, the story that really comes to mind is at our last baptism, um, we had a lady that um, was at our North Shore campus and was online and kind of saw some events that were happening, including baptism, after the service. So she actually was in at her house and she 
accepted Christ and actually jumped in her car, came and got baptized, met the, no you know, met the, the campus pastor and um, just had this incredible kind of story of kind of finding us online and, and getting connected and, and it, coming to know Jesus. Like just really cool stuff that's happening. So Accepted Jesus, hopped in her car, drove, got baptized all in the course of just like an hour like, or two here. I think that's how it went. I mean, I could be misquoting this, you yeah. know, but I think that's how it went. And, and even just like in general, our last baptism, just like so many people that kind of were online and kind of like maybe a part of our community, maybe not. Mm -hmm. And then just like jumping in for baptism. It's just been mm. uh, really incredible. So. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? What, really what's cool. the story that comes to mind here? I feel like I need to step back and talk a little bit about the church because I didn't really mention anything. I just jumped into my skiing accident when you asked so me about my church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you said 125 yeah. years and we just left it there, but yeah, don't yeah. worry, man. Um, well, uh, at Chapel Street Church, we are located in Geneva, but we are opening other campuses. So we have four different campuses and our newest one is in uh, North Aurora. We have another one in Mill Creek, which is another town outside of Geneva. So uh, um, we have four different campuses. We are, we're predominantly live preaching, so, which makes multi-site growth really hard. Yeah. Because it's contingent on raising up a, a pastor, a leader of a congregation before we launch and open a new site. But it's been really cool and God's been blessing it. And we have these little pocket communities in each of our campuses. They all have a strong amount of autonomy and strength in their own, in their own identity, but we keep our Chapel Street DNA really strong. So we have a strong DNA that translates into our campuses, but then they have a lot of uh, community that builds up and in individually there. So, yeah, so your structure is you've got a live preacher at every mm -hmm. campus and it's a different preacher at every one. Yeah. Which is just a, a different model than we have here at the totally. campus, which yeah. they both work. Yeah. Praise God for it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's strengths and uh, there's strengths and weaknesses with each model, but um, yeah, it's this is how what God's called us to and it's been really, it's been really great. So we've been loving it. Um, so to your question, the story that comes to mind Man, it's a fresh one because I just heard it earlier today. So uh, this morning I got a voicemail from uh, one of my volunteers who who I chat with, or who, who helps me host online services. Um, and she was uh, in an accident and like fell in her living room. She's an older woman, she fell and broke her kneecap and her femur and, um, and was in the hospital. And I'm like, oh man, I'm so bummed. Like, I'm so sorry you got hurt. And so I went to go visit her in the hospital today. And she was saying um, how, this is like a super microcosm of a story, but she was telling me how she was at, recently at a women's event where she was able to meet in person some of the people, one of the, one of the people that she chats with online. Oh, oh that's cool. You know, yeah, so it was just kind of a fun connection, like, oh, you're, you're the person online, you're the host. Did and they have any broken bones? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a broken bone community. Yeah, it yeah. was part I of my it. impetus too, because to We're go all visit. Broken, right? <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, it was. It was good. We we traded war sto stories. Me and uh, my co-host. We we uh, we talked about our broken bones together today. I'm sorry, I brought it up. Again. No, that's okay. It was funny. Um, we uh, so yeah, my my host Lynn met somebody in person that she runs into online, and we we're just kind of laughing and celebrating online. It's kind of a weird place to to form deep relationships. Often, what we do in the chats are like, I'm tuning in from Barrington, or you know, it's like kind of surfacey conversation and chatting, or it's like, Amen, you know, that's all we really get to do in a quick chat. Most of the time, yeah. you know, there is good conversation. We do separate and pray with people on occasion, but um, that's few and far between to have like meaningful prayer times on online. But this was a little instance where all that little surfacey conversation actually led to a meaningful conversation in person when they were able to see each other and make that connection in person. So I'm like, Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for that little opportunity to to see how online is uh, is building connections, though they feel superficial. Uh, at times, um, it, it can lead toward meaningful connection Yeah, at points. It can so. be something completely deeper. I mean, I, I had that experience not too long ago here either. Um, and it's not even really a super joyful story, but yeah. um, a congregant uh, ended up passing away. 
and it was um, a family that had attended our Bolingbrook campus. Uh, but since the pandemic, the, the family had been online the entire time. Mm. Um, and the family ended up reaching out and asked if I would be willing to officiate the funeral uh, because they're like, we, well, you're our pastor. Why, yeah. would, why would we not ask you to do that? Right. Um, I had never met these people in person up until you know two days before the, the ceremony and the funeral um, just to start talking through, like, tell me a little bit about right. your husband. What did that look like? What are some stories that we can share? Um, mm. Praise God for the hope that we have in that, uh, you know, I'll get to know him for eternity mm. to come. Like, those things are exciting, but um, it was it was fascinating that online ended up being a tool to be able to allow us to um, kind of sort of know one another or know each other in a little bit of a yeah. way, um, but to have a connection that was real enough to be able to say like, no, you're you're my pastor. I, w- I exactly. would like you to yeah. be able to do this for us. Clearly their connection is strong enough to you that they they wanted you to officiate. Yeah, so 100%, quite an honor. 100%. Yeah. Um, but honestly, one of the most exciting things for us, um, we just talked about it like two weeks ago here at our church. We were in the midst of a capital campaign uh, to build a new building for our South Naperville campus, which is just down the road from where we're at here. 27 month campaign. Um, again, if you want the final numbers, uh, you can go back a couple of weeks and check that out. Week three of our David Sermon series. You can get all of the specifics on that because again, I don't know when you're going to be joining us for this, but I don't want to spoil anything. You <laughs> should be joining the real moment. Uh, but ultimately, like we started a capital campaign and then three months later, a pandemic hit <laughs> and wood prices skyrocket and yeah. all of those different things. Um, but God was faithful through all of it. We have a brand new home, like a permanent fixture um, on two super busy streets, like just a massive intersection. Wow. Um, everything was done on time. Our congregation from four different campuses in person and an online group as well here um, all got together and praise God, we have a place where people can gather and have a beacon of hope in a community um, nice. and get to celebrate. Like we are one church that pulled off something that we shouldn't have been able to on our own. And yet God somehow used all of us and all of our people mm. uh, to do something really, really special. So, so awesome. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Praise God for that. That's as much awesome. fun as it is talking about money. Like that was a clear <laughs> God moment where there was no way we could have orchestrated on our own, especially yeah. no, you know, I think if anyone would have told us a pandemic was coming, uh, you, you probably pumped the brakes on something like that, right. but uh, felt the conviction God continuing to tell us to move forward. So we did uh, and yeah. been totally worthwhile because of it. That's it's similar. It brings up in me like a lot of the, the stories of um, early on in the pandemic. It was, it was funny. We, I am part of the video team and we shot a video the beginning of um, February yeah, we shot a video of February of our pastor announcing to our congregation the launch of our fourth campus in North Aurora. So then March, things like lock down and close and very rapidly, right as we're like making this announcement about like, the, the church came to us and wanted us to take them over because they were struggling and mm-hmm. we were like wanting to expand and they saw us as a healthy church and they said like, hey, if we wanna reach, the, reach this community with the gospel, Chapel Street's gonna help us get there. So there, it was an awesome relationship that formed with this church. We were announcing that to the, to the congregation, and then the pandemic hit, and we're like, "What the heck? We do need to do needed to do construction on it, and all of that." But despite the horrible timing of that, <laughs> like we were still able to raise the amount of money that we needed to do for that. The congregation was like, "Yes, like let's let's get behind this." Like I, the pandemic didn't slow down the vision of our church at all. Hmm. It didn't seem. Uh, which was so cool and such a blessing and humbling. Like, is we're actually going to be celebrating kind of a a two year anniversary of having to to close our doors and go fully online. So we're not pretending that that the pandemic is immediately over right now, though we all want it to be. Yeah, yeah. This, this is kind of just a mile marker, a milestone for us of like God's been doing amazing things in the past two years. Let's praise Him for it and let's have a service where we can kind of memorialize what God has been doing over the past two years because there's some very concrete things to celebrate. So we're gonna be doing that. And among them is the launch of our fourth campus and also opening a Shepherd's Heart Care Center, which we have a, um, it's like a food pantry and budget counseling. It has a bunch of different arms, but it's essentially to care for the needs of the community in a multitude of ways. The primary 
way is a is a food is a um, a food pantry. Yeah. But it has a bunch of different arms that it reaches out from there on. So that's but, a good reminder to me, uh, yeah. one, that we should be celebrating that we're at the two-year mark. Not of a pandemic, yeah. like we're not excited about yeah, that. Totally. Uh, we're not excited that it's not, you know, completely done. Uh, but it's been two years of a full, you know, hard pivot of we need to figure out how we can equip people and yeah. reach people through a different tool that maybe we used some, but probably not to its fullest extent. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to steal that. I hope go you don't mind. It. No, go for uh, it. I feel like that's what Run the best pastors do anyways, right? <laughs> they hear an idea and like, yeah, I'm, can I use totally. that? Totally. Sure. Totally. Sure. Um, so the cat's out of the bag, right? All three of us are online pastors. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of the, the second half of the conversation I'm hoping that we can have um, is really just, man, it's been two years of pandemic. Um, it sounds like you're in a little bit of a similar boat of online heavy after, you know, at that point. Um, I know Willow is a little bit larger than us in a lot of ways and uh, a little bit more forward thinking sometimes than we have historically been. But just sit down and think over the last year or two, uh, what sort of things have you learned about online church uh, that you would be willing to share with all of us? Like the good, the yeah. bad, the indifferent. Yeah, man, I, I was joking before we were recording, before we started recording, but like, I feel like I, when you ask that question, it's assuming that we are some kind of specialist in this field, but like, I do not feel like a specialist in this area at all. Like, it's just such a vast, area of learning and there's when you think about online there's so many so many ways to tackle that it's so complicated At, like I feel like there's I, I don't know there's so much that I don't know I can't possibly feel like I know enough hmm. um, so I don't know how to answer that question <laughs> that's what it comes down to <laughs> alright that's yeah. fair let me turn the yeah. other way yeah. 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 So so you just, home. <laughs> I don't know about that but, um, I will just say that I think there are a lot of, of learnings I think um, an experience in, in a, a, a place of worship is a little bit different than when you're sitting on your couch. Mm. And I think we've all sort of grappled with how do we still engage people and make them feel like they're in a sacred space when they're sitting in a space mm. that's very normal and everyday. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I think we've all we've talked quite a bit about, well, how can we make that different or, or special for people at home? And um, I don't know that we've figured it out, yeah. but um, it's it's cool to see that people can give at home. You know, they can mm. serve at home. They can, you know, join join in online at home. And um, I think I'll just talk a little bit about the invite because I feel like it's so important when you're inviting people to church. Um, traditionally, you'd say, "Hey, I'd really like to invite you to my church. Will you come with me?" Mm. Um, and I think what's happened online is you still want to invite people because it's a great experience, but uh, how exactly do you do that, you know? And so just walking through, do you forward them something and you're like, hey, you should go to my church by yourself online, oh, you know? Yeah. So it's yeah. like, how do you not make it feel like an ad or like, you know, something that you're pushing on people when the traditional invitation is so much about joining? And so we have not figured that out yet, but mm. um, we're trying to struggle through how to make that invite really easy for folks to easily invite their hairdresser or, you know, yeah. colleague or, you know, whatever. Um, and we're talking a little bit about the metaverse, uh, just trying to explore what that might be. And it's kind of cool because if you were to do a service in the metaverse, you could invite someone and they could actually join you and you could watch together. And so yeah. we're trying to explore what that might look like to kind of reinvigorate that invitational yeah. Uh, expression into online. Yeah, I'm waiting for the day when the technology is good enough where there's just going to be like a chair in our worship center surrounded by cameras to where <laughs> it's almost like you're immersed in one of our worship centers and like you see everybody else around yeah. you and what's happening and all of that. But uh, it's not far. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not far. It, yeah. it might be for me, but right, right, the right, technology is right. probably yeah. almost there. Yeah. Um, the amazing thing is that like, that I, I imagine some listeners are hearing this, the thought of like church on in VR or church or even just church online. Maybe there's still some resistance to that. It like and I just have this this feeling, I guess something that I have learned over this time is that God can redeem anything. You know, mm -hmm. like yeah. the 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 cross was an object of punishment, of suffering, of death. Um, and he redeemed it to be a symbol of hope. If he can do that to the cross. He can redeem the metaverse, you know, to you to be used for his kingdom. 
He can redeem the use of social media to be used to further his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Like, like nothing is beyond God. So my attitude is just like, hey, let's not be like naysayers about how, what, what would work or would not work or what I'm open to, what I'm not open to. Let's just like, like humble ourselves and like, hey, God, are you, are you here? Are you, are you working in this in me? Like, are you gonna minister to me through this? Like, should I be open to this? Yeah. Just like David was in that, in the passage that yeah. uh, was last week, so. Yeah, I mean, from my end, the thing I keep going back to is like, God's called us to cast wide nets and at the same time also called us to have individual conversations mm-hmm. and individual relationships. Mm-hmm. And how can we frequently try to do things that are going to be, um, uh, I'm going to use the wrong word, but like appeal to the masses in some way of getting somebody to the point where they would say, yeah, I'll check out your church or yeah. something is very different about you. I'd love to have a, what is it? And yeah. how can I have what you have? Uh, you know, like what can we do to continually like try to cast mm-hmm. the net on the other side of the boat? Uh, but at the same time, realize like it's very easy for that to be consumeristic. Like mm-hmm. you cast wide nets online a lot of time through content. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the, <laughs> week at the Compass, right? Uh, but even beyond that, like it's great to do something like that to try and encourage and equip people where they are. Uh, but if yeah. you do that and you don't, you're not able to connect any further. Uh, that's always been the the heart of mm-hmm. me through online. Like, I would love, you know, I love the metrics and I love tracking all those things because I used to work in an engineering firm and um, I can build great spreadsheets with graphs uh, and that's a love language of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, but as great as numbers are, Stetson, I think you're the one that I heard phrase it this way the first time. Like, I haven't been called to pastor views or numbers on a screen. Like, I've been called to pastor people. Mm. Uh, and just that constant reminder, like, it's it's the people that make up the metrics. So who are yeah. those people and what can we continually do to be able to connect with them? Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be unique. Like the, I'm glad somebody's thinking about the metaverse uh, because I'm not at least right. yet, you know, yeah. um, but it's a new town square that we yeah, just haven't gotten totally. into before. Totally. totally. And and isn't it like so telling how isolating people isolated people have been over this last you know pandemic era you know people are scared they're not sure i mean mm-hmm. some people are going out and acting like there is no pandemic and that's mm-hmm. great for them yeah. but uh there's also people that are like really scared for their health and and they're limiting contact and it's like how do we uh facilitate you know um community in mm-hmm. a space where um, you know, people are feeling more alone than ever, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that community end is huge too, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, I love the churches that have been able to crack the code a little bit on getting people together for watch parties or mm-hmm. uh, hosting people in their home to be able to say, hey, we're providing you a weekend service and you've got access to small group questions. You know, put out some pancakes, invite your neighbors over and like have breakfast and yeah. be the church together. Um, I would love to move that direction at some point mm-hmm. in time. We'll have to put some some brain power towards it. Yeah, but, we should talk uh, about that more. It'd be, be a fun thing to try and consider and see what God does with it. See if totally. it works for our context or not. Um, not yeah. saying that's where we're going at the compass necessarily yeah. even either. Uh, it's just been one of those headspace things of mine lately of, I wonder what that would actually look like and how we yeah. can pull it off. Well, and even the coffees that you were talking about earlier, I think that goes a long way to like alleviating that isolation, right? And that creating that connection. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a great plug. If you want to <laughs> connect, go to the compass.net slash digital coffee. Teed them up there. Right? I, I, I'm a never ending promo, I feel like. But you know what? I'm okay with that too. Uh, but honestly, just it's a Zoom call where people pick the topic. Like yeah. uh, it's not unique. It's a, a standard like meet the pastor concept. Um, but for some reason it really resonated and clicked with people. Uh, yeah. And we've had really good success of people reaching out and wanting to have conversations and um, being open to just have the conversations that they want to have, mm-hmm. uh, which is terrifying sometimes because again, you don't know exactly where it's gonna go, uh, but I do think God honors those spaces. So it's been as yeah. short as like a five minute, hey, I had one quick question, all the way to like a two and a half hour conversation of I want to talk church and politics. Yeah. Um, and I think you guys know me enough at this point, like that's the last conversation I personally <laughs> want to have. I'm not, I'm not built that way, uh, yeah. but it mattered to them. So yeah. I was thrilled to do that. It's still actually one of my favorite ones to bring up because it was difficult for me. Uh, and yet, like uh, hopefully God saw that I was able, you know, and they saw there are people here that mm. care for me in the space and the questions that I'm asking. So. 
I think all the, like, that is such a good example of just trying stuff. Like we, as pastors, we're in our, in our various spheres of influence and what we have available to us. We're just trying to connect with people, just trying to connect with others that are might maybe feeling isolated. And you came up that that's a great, the coffee with the pastor, what do you call it again? Digital coffee. Digital coffee. Like that, that's just a, another mechanism of trying to to help people not feel isolated. So if, if you're feeling isolated in any way and just want to connect to somebody, like do the digital coffee because it's it's just available to you. And so we're all trying to different strategies of trying to connect with people on an individual basis, on a collective basis, connect them uh, with, the, with us, but then also ultimately with God because that is going to meet their ultimate need. Um, and But we're just trying different things to do that. And it's... A, new space like d doing that digitally i really don't think this is maybe an, a different aside but the i don't think that we that like digital meets all the needs mm -hmm. if, if anybody's hearing that like we're all in the digital space and there's we're, we want to explore what it does really well and leverage that to the best of its ability but there's no there's no substitute for sitting across from somebody physically there's a reason we're here physically with each other and not on a Zoom call. It's kind of like f a funny joke that it's like, yeah, I'm gonna go meet in person with my other online pastors. So do you guys, I want you to finish your thought, yeah. but just real quick, do you guys get that all the time? Like yes. when I tell Pretty people good. that I'm getting together with online pastors, like, are you meeting online? Like, no, we get together in person. <laughs> Wait, what? They <laughs> laugh. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. Like, it's a great tool, but we don't always have to do that. <laughs> just because we're online pastors doesn't mean we wanna do everything online. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, the problem, it's, it's not like we need the hammer to, to nail every nail, you know? We can, we can have some different tools in our toolbox to, yes. like, connect, you know? Zoom yes. can be one of them, and that's great. Yeah. But it doesn't need to be the only tool that we can use. Yeah, so. 100%. Because there's no, there's no substitute from just being with you guys. Like, being, there's, God has created us to be embodied. It, that's part of the reason why I think he sent him, himself through his son to be embodied before us. Mm -hmm. Like, uh so I, I feel like our embodied presence with other in fellowship is something that you can't avoid like that. If, if you're tuning in online and that's all you do, but you could walk in and you're not afraid of the pandemic or there's not some kind of thing that's limiting you, then I would say, man, just get it in the church, get in the building because there's no substitute for that. Totally. Um, I, I put it that like uh, vulnerability is a huge part of the discipleship making process. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when you're kind of, uh, unknown or mm. incognito watching a service, you know, you're not exposing yourself to other believers, you know, yeah. or other people in general. Yeah. And so you can kind of hide in a way that, you know, Adam and Eve hid, hid in the garden from God. Totally. And so uh, while digital is great, we need to make sure that people are becoming fully known and mm -hmm. fully loved. And the only way to do that is by revealing things, which you can do online in the chat, and that's great. Yeah. Uh, but that's a very small step in vulnerability, yeah. and I know that's hard for some people, and yeah. I'm glad that they're doing it. Yeah. But let's try to encourage people to be vulnerable so that they can continue pursuing their their uh, relationship mm -hmm. with Christ. Good word. So yeah. I want to ask one last question here before we start to wrap things up. And when we're recording this, it's still maybe even a little early in the game for you guys to have an answer. But uh, by the time this airs, we are like in the thick of Easter is right around the corner. Mm. So tell us what's happening at Willow Creek for Good Friday and Easter. Even mm. if you don't you know, have the service times, like, do you know a little bit of a high level of a, a teaser that you can toss out there? I'm, I'm so glad because last year, you know, I would have had no idea what to tell you at this point. <laughs> but this year we're on the ball and we know what's going on. And um, I'm excited. We've got a, a, a pretty cool creative piece that I don't want to totally ruin. Yeah. Uh, but um, it's kind of a backwards and forward dialogue using the same words, a palindrome, oh, that cool. sort of is going to come together and be super cool, I think. Just, um, you know, the whole idea of, uh, you know, how we were all lost and uh, alone and without Christ and how kind of his death and resurrection kind of brought us uh, into that saving grace. And so... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to our Easter service. I just think it's going to be, um, yeah, one, one to remember for the, 
for the history books. Sweet. That's cool. That, that's, he, that's a huge Was that too sell. much hype? Was yeah. that? <laughs> it's going to be one for the history books. Yeah. I, I, love yeah. it. I love it. I'm uh, excited about it. All right, man. So, Stetson, what about Chapel and Street? What's going on I, for Easter? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead and try. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, we will do awesome stuff, and it'll be better than Willow. Just, <laughs> just, just will kidding. Be. <laughs> just kidding. God will be there, and he'll be glorified. I just say that in jest because I'm amongst my friends. Um, we, uh, yeah, uh, nothing is super planned or concrete that I, I have right now. I do know we every year we love Easter is such a fun time to do baptisms. The metaphor of of, of uh, dying to yourself and coming risen to life with Christ. That is just such a metaphor. So we always do live baptisms during this time, and I get into the how we're going to capture that in a dynamic way to um, engage our online audience. So I'm going to geek out about how to do that better in, an, in the next following weeks. I love but, it. Um, I'd love yeah. to hear your plan. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I always pitch, we will take the show on the road and baptize you wherever you are, and I'm still waiting That's for the good. first person to take me up on that. Uh, because one, it's actually true. Like, I will go anywhere I can get to to baptize somebody who is ready to take that step. Uh, yeah. Because again, I, I geek out about that, that. as well. Um, so take me up on that, quite frankly. Um, even though, you know, it's spring by the time this airs and maybe still a little cold, I'll go cold weather. Um, mm. I would also go to a beach. <laughs> I'll just yeah. say baptism doesn't work over Zoom. My IT yeah. department can attest to the <laughs> dunking of the laptops. Not, does, <laughs> don't, doesn't don't, work. Yeah, don't <laughs> That'd do be that. a fun parody. <laughs> we, somebody, we should make a we video should do like that. that. We should do that. Uh, but I'm, no, I'm excited. I'm, I'm yeah. really excited to see what you're able to plan and how that comes together. Mm. So, yeah. um, like here's the last thing I want to toss out to you guys. How can they learn more about your church and what's happening and uh, what can they do to be praying for your churches as well? I'll leave um, that to whoever wants to go first. Hmm. Well, you can find us at chapelstreet.church. Uh, that's our URL and then navigate from there or just Chapel ST Church anywhere on social media. You'll find us through that. Um, and then just yeah, explore some content. Um, you can find me, S. Butler, at chapelstreetchurch.com. Uh, you can reach me that way if you want to follow up on anything I said here or something like that, or just reach out to me personally. I would love that. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and you can reach me at willowcreek.org uh, or at dbosager at willowcreek.org. Uh, we will try to put the spelling of that in the show notes. I screwed up. <laughs> That's still, exactly so I'm true. I'm very sorry that I screwed that up. Like, I thought I had it down, but... It's hard for people to find me via email, but you'll find me on the <laughs> website somewhere. Uh, man, I, honestly, just yeah. thank you guys for coming to do this. Uh, it's a pleasure. I, I love hanging out with both of you. I learn a lot from you. Um, we do think we're better together because we're still all figuring it out. Like that's Absolutely. the moral of this story, right? Um, as online pastors um, and as people honestly just joining, like all of us are still continually trying to learn uh, what's the best way we can do X. Mm. Um, how can I continue to live for Christ where I'm at? What does it look like to evangelize or be discipled or to disciple somebody? Um, and mm. all of those things kind of shift and morph in some ways with um honestly, just the nature of life, right? You're going to reach people in different ways uh, by doing different things. And I'm excited mm -hmm. that the three of us have, you know, been trying to do that to the best of our God-given abilities as well. So for sure. And I will just jump in and say that this guy is the real deal. So yeah. you guys are lucky to have this guy. Yeah. I'll take that too. Uh, I'm not. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't know that I always agree with that, but uh, <laughs> I try my best. Um, Anyways, with all of that said, honestly, thank all of you for joining us here at Midweek at the Compass. Uh, make sure to join us again next week, where I'm going to be joined by Rich Sanford. He's a church planning partner of the Mission Church out of Utah. He's actually our first ever multi-site campus pastor. Uh, and a little bit of a spoiler alert, he's the guy who, outside of my dad, um, has gotten me to this point. I would not be the Christian and man and pastor that I am today uh, if it wasn't for the fact that he intentionally discipled me. So one, I'm personally excited for that conversation. But two, we're going to be talking about authority. And he's got a really fun perspective on it. Having been a military man and now a senior pastor, he's seen authority from multiple different ends. So I'm really excited to have you join us for that conversation next time here at Midweek at the Compass.